The EDIUS layouter is not just for resizing and panning and scanning around inside clips. You can also use it as a fully featured 3D picture and picture tool. And actually you can use it in some pretty creative ways. A simple example of that is this. I've got some photos here that I've put into a simple timeline and I'm applying a kind of a basic Ken Burns effect where I'm animating around them and just getting different views of the total image. It just makes it come alive and makes it feel a little bit more like video. This is a super easy effect to achieve. Here I've got a clip that I haven't modified and these clips are much higher resolution than my HD project setting. If I go into the layouter for this clip, the first thing I'm probably going to do is change the stretch value back up to 100%. By default, EDIUS is going to scale this down so that the entire image fits inside my view. But what I want to do is pan and scan around inside of it. And here's how we do it. First of all, I'm going to switch to 3D mode, I think, so we can get a bit of an extra tweak in the appearance. I'm going to turn on keyframing for all of the controls in the layouter. And this is just so that I can enable keyframes for everything all in a single step. And now I'm, I've got the zoom tool selected, so I'm going to zoom out enough for me to see the total image. You see this outer box is the full frame of my photo. So if I just pull down a little bit so I can see both views, I'm going to use the selection tool to set up a position, something like that's OK. Then I'm going to move to the end of this little timeline. I'm going to come back one frame just using the arrow keys on my keyboard. And this allows me to see the last frame of the video. I'm going to add another keyframe and I'm just going to move the view around. I'm also, I think, going to scroll down a bit and add a little touch of Y rotation to the video. And you'll see the effect this has in a moment. So I'm going to click OK. And now as I play through this video, you can see that little bit of Y axis rotation gives something extra to the movement. I mentioned that this can also be used to create 3D picture in picture and I've got a timeline set up here already like that. This has just got a color mat in the background. And as I scrub through, you can see I've got this picture in picture effect moving over. Here's another one. Here's another one. This is effectively the same as I've just done with the stills, but in reverse, instead of being inside the picture, we're just scaling down. And I've got a third item here where I haven't applied this effect yet. And I should mention with all of these effects, they're actually just one effect where I've selected it and dragged it onto the other clips on the timeline. So I'm using them as their own effect preset. Still, I've got this clip on the timeline. I go into the layouter and it's very much the same affair. All I have to do is just scale this image down. And while we're there, let's turn on the keyframing for all of these. Let's add a keyframe and let's position this round about the top right. I'm going to put a little bit of rotation on, but ah, see, I've got a problem here. I don't have my X and Y rotation and that's because I'm in 2D mode. No problem. I can switch to 3D mode and now I've got those controls. But when you do switch between 2D and 3D mode, be sure to enable the rotation and position controls for the additional axes. By default, you don't have the depth option for position. So I'm going to turn on keyframing for that and add a keyframe in this control at the bottom. And of course, also, I won't have it for X and Y rotation. And again, turn it on and add those keyframes. Other than that, other than remembering to turn those keyframes on, it's absolutely fine to toggle between these two modes. So now I'm going to start off with, let's have a keyframe here and let's have a little bit of Y rotation. Notice that if I want to, I can click in the interface here or I can click over up on the right side of the panel or in fact on the image. I'll just click about here. I'll put this on about 50, something like that position this in the corner of the screen and then I'll add a keyframe about a second in. Again, I'm just going to click right at the top and add a keyframe for everything for the layouter. Drag over, move the image across the screen, switch that rotation around. And if you want the rotation to match perfectly, just click into the number, type in a, a hyphen, a minus sign and tab out of that. And you've now exactly switched the angle and then that's pretty much it. Add a keyframe at the end. If you want extra points, you can add a very simple fade. So I've got the source, 
I'll uh, just make sure that I've got no opacity at the beginning and that fades up and then at the end again drop the source level down and I've got my fade up move and fade down again very very simple to do using the layouter you'll find if I just click OK on there that if you want to apply those kinds of animation presets to multiple clips on the timeline it's helpful to give them exactly the same duration so the timing of the keyframes is the same. Remember you can right click and choose duration and specify a duration for clips on the timeline directly rather than having to do a rather delicate trim operation. I'd say though the real power of the layouter comes in combination with other effects in this case, for example, I've, I've done it pretty roughly, but you can see I've introduced a shadow, a reflection in the window of this person sitting, staring at their cup of tea. There's not that much movement in it, so you can't see it too clearly. But essentially what I've done is combine the layouter with the mask effect, which is a very powerful video filter inside of Edius. The mask allows you to specify different areas that have or don't have opacity or special effects on them. In this instance, I've used the mask on the top layer of this sequence to specify a foreground version of my clip. This is just part of the same background. There's my background video with no reflection in the window. And then in the foreground, I've just added a mask effect. Actually, I've got a couple of them on here. You can see this one's giving me a little bit of a vignette on the video, but this mask filter is just a cutout to bring in the foreground elements so that I can see the reflection behind them. So I've just set the opacity outside of these selected regions to be zero. It's quite important to have your user settings configured to give you on playback this option here, combine filter layers and track layers for effect settings. If you have this on, when you're configuring multi-layer effects, you'll get the cumulative result of that effect displayed over on the right here on the recorder monitor, rather than just the layer you're working on. So here I've got three layers. I've got my foreground layer, which is just a cutout so I can see behind it this shadow version of my subject. And then I've got the original unmodified background. And all of these have some color effects on them to give a, a look to the film that we're working on. To create that reflection, if I just turn off the other layers, all I did was again use the mask, this time to do a pretty rough hewn cutout of the subject. And I put a bit of softening on the edge so it's not too jarring. And I set the outside of that mask area to have opacity zero. The result of that is, you see, we just get this cutout of the person. I've then combined that with the layouter. And notice I've pulled the layouter down so that it appears after the mask on the list. You can switch these around very, very easily. And now inside the layouter, I've repositioned the video and I've reduced the opacity a little. See, I've dropped the opacity down. And by reducing the opacity of the layer, I allow it to blend with the other layers in the video. So turning those back on, if I go back into my layouter, because I've got that tick box on in my settings, you can see if I just drag down a little bit, if I adjust the source opacity, you can see that result very, very clearly. And I'm getting in my recorder monitor this cumulative output. I think I maybe need to work a little bit on the layering, but I've got something like the effect I want. And again, this comes from combining the layouter with other effects available inside of Edius. So that's working with the layouter creatively in Edius.